We're in the automatic sequence now, T minus two minutes, on the first test of the Saturn C3X rocket. This demonstration flight will carry the Hyperion shuttle to orbit. We'll have more details about the payload after liftoff. We are now T minus one minute and 45 seconds. We're once again trying to beat the thunderstorms here at the Cape. One thing you can say about them is that they're certainly consistent as the forecast of heavy precipitation in the late afternoon and through the evening has been pretty much consistent throughout the season. Winds are steady though as we are now T minus 1 minute and 20 seconds. This new launcher for the EDB is expected to be able to carry 45 tons to low Earth orbit. However, on this mission it's only carrying 17 tons, which is expected to be approximately its lunar transfer payload, as we are approaching T minus one minute on the countdown. Uh, the EDB would like to note that the fairing on the rocket in this case is a special fairing for the Hyperion shuttle payload, and is not the normal fairing for this particular launcher. Tank pressurization is complete, well over 1,000 tons of propellant and oxidizer sitting on the launch pad, ready to go, as we are now T minus 35 seconds. T minus 30. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff. We have liftoff of the Saturn C3X. The rocket has cleared the tower. We do not have telemetry information for this test launch. We will bring that to you on further launches with the Saturn C3X as it passes the test phase. The Hyperion shuttle is a reasonably expensive piece of hardware coming in at $85 million without its booster pack. And it does have a booster pack that uh, costs about $10 million. Uh, that booster pack would be able to bring it into orbit around the moon. So this shuttle on this on this launcher is capable of transferring to the moon and getting in, into orbit around the moon and then subsequently docking at a station at the moon. However, it would not then have the fuel to transfer back unless it could uh, attach a new booster pack. As we see the Saturn C3X and its two F1 engines making its way above the cloud layer, above Cape Canaveral here. T plus one minute and 30 seconds. The rocket is past max Q now. And still looking reasonably good. It's hard to say whether the rocket is nominal at this time. But no significant deviations from the planned trajectory. The first stage will burn for 2 minutes and 19 seconds altogether, which is shorter than the burn time for the Saturn 9 and approximately 20 seconds shorter than the burn time for the Saturn V rocket. And there we have a quick burnout and separation waiting for... Uh, there seems to be some sort of collision there. But uh, we seem to be go for four second stage burn. Two minutes and 40 seconds after launch and after this stage burns out, we will see a partial burn of the third stage and that will bring the Hyperion shuttle into Earth orbit. 
It will not transfer the shuttle to lunar orbit in this uh, mission. This mission is solely to bring it into orbit and then the operators of the Hyperion shuttle will then subsequently attempt to re-enter it and there is no plan to bring it into a runway landing on this mission. The plan is to have it splash down so that uh, it can uh, return the telemetry data which will be necessary to plan a future runway landing. So it is uh, purely a re-entry test. There is every expectation that the shuttle will be recovered but that is the responsibility of the contracting agency and not the EDB. The EDB simply needs to uh, carry the shuttle into orbit. As we see unusual deviations from the flight path uh, on the second stage here, uh, some sort of oscillations. Uh, there's, uh, there is now serious concern uh, in mission control a representative from the contracting agency is present and uh, expressing serious concerns about the safety of the payload right now. Werner von Kerman is reassuring him that uh, they'll have the situation under control, but there's no, no, definitely no indication that they have the situation under control at this time. Uh, the rocket is still burning for orbit, though not stably as we see what is potentially a gimbling problem on the G2 engines. And while the average traje trajectory of these engines is still still okay, as the deviations get wilder and wilder, there's every possibility that the rocket will end up spinning out of control the contracting agency representative is now shouting at Werner von Kerwin to shut down the second stage and allow the shuttle to glide, return, uh, make its, uh, well it won't technically be a re-entry in this case, simply return to the surface. As we see here, the third stage waiting to be lit, also we could abort to orbit using the third stage though it seems as if we need to burn the second stage for a little bit longer for that to happen. And so Wern von Kerman is attempting to convince the representative that we should allow the second stage to continue burning for, for the necessary time. And uh, to get into orbit, uh, th there was some audible failure there. And, uh, and with that, uh, Werner von Kerman accepted the need to shut down the second stage. Uh, that is fa fairing separation, and we can now see the camera on the payload. This is on one of the angular surfaces on the payload, so I'm not entirely clear what the orientation of it is. Uh, separation of the second stage. And... Uh, Mission Control is waiting for the rocket to be properly oriented before firing the third stage. Third stage is lit. Seven RL-10A3s and it looks like the rocket is stable now. And uh, we are go for orbit. The fuel on the third stage is sufficient to bring the Hyperion shuttle into orbit at this time. There will have to be serious investigations into what happened with the second stage, but for now, it seems like the situation is is reasonably good for this mission. As uh, we saw the payload intact, the audible failure earlier did raise concerns that there was uh, damage, but uh, now that the payload fairing is off, there's transmissions from the payload and it is showing all of its systems nominal. The payload has an uh, instrument pack in its uh, cargo bay, and that instrument pack will send valuable data on its re-entry.
third stage of the Saturn C3X continues to orbit as we had significant trouble with the second stage. The word from the EDB is that, that those problems can be easily fixed. So we'll look forward to seeing a proper launch of this rocket in the second demonstration flight. Uh, this is a simulated view of what the Hyperion shuttle looks atop the third stage at this time. Still some instability here as uh, we continue to suspect that there is a gimbling problem. Possibly insufficient gimbling on these engines. And you can see on the tail of the Hyperion shuttle its booster pack which also has an RL-10A3 engine. The Hyperion shuttle will be capable of carrying a crew of six to locations around low Earth orbit and lunar orbit, and then returning them safely to the surface of Earth. There's no expectation to have it dock with the space station at this time, though it is certainly capable of doing so. No clear indication of how long we expect this stage to burn right now. Uh, nor any precise indication of what the final orbit of the Hyperion shuttle might be. The Saturn C3X is a development on the original Saturn C3 which was designed in the 1960s, early 1960s as a possible moon launch rocket. And the differences between the two are that first of all the base diameter of the Saturn C3X is 8.6 meters as opposed to 8.1 meters for the Saturn C3. And the reason for that was that the EDB couldn't figure out how to place four J2 rockets on the second stage on a 8.1 meter stage and so had to expand it to 8.6 meters. Uh, another difference is that the third stage has an additional RL-10 A3 engine. There is the possibility that even though this rocket is rated for 45 tons, it can carry up to 50 tons to low Earth orbit. Right now, the future of this rocket, however, is entirely in the hands of contractors and whether they will be willing to overlook the, the non-catastrophic failure that we saw earlier in this launch. As we should be coming close to the, the shutdown of the third stage here, as the rocket is nearing orbit. Third stage cutout and the orbit now reads at 486 by 210 kilometers. Not a bad orbit considering all the difficulties we had on the way up. As we now await payload separation. Assuming its mission is a success, once the Hyperion shuttle is recovered from a splashdown and its telemetry data is recovered, we will be able to bring you a simulated view of its of its re-entry and also discuss uh, what happened with it and how viable it is as a crew transport vehicle. Still awaiting payload separation here hoping that there are no malfunctions on that as we know something something did occur during launch trying to activate the RCS ports and yes the RCS ports are firing on the shuttle 
which means that it is uh, basically ready for re-entry. It does not need the the booster pack in order to conduct a re-entry. So the contracted portion of this mission was a success. However, the launcher test portion of the mission was at best a partial success. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this broadcast of the Saturn C3X demonstration launch and hope you will also join us for future launches from the EDB. And with that, uh, thank you for watching, and this is the EDB signing off.